Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with The Movement System. In this video, we're gonna break down this research article which analyzed the specific kinetics and kinematics associated with improving change of direction speed. I'm gonna break this down into three practical cues and show you video clips so that way you can figure out exactly how to improve change of direction speed for yourself and for your athletes. It seems like every YouTube video on change of direction is either one, a hype video of random complex drills with no technique cues, or two, a clip of a good drill but blurry and only five seconds filmed in 2011 on a potato. So this video is different. I meticulously reviewed this very detailed research article just published in 2021, which provided a ton of detailed information on metrics including mean horizontal propulsive velocity, braking force, propulsive force ratios for the last and second to last step. But luckily you don't have to worry about interpreting effect size and confidence intervals and these more complicated metrics. I'm gonna serve you this information on a silver platter in the form of three practical cues that you can immediately use to improve your change of direction speed. These cues and training techniques will apply to any sport involving change of direction, whether that's basketball, football, soccer, or semi-professional quidditch. These cues will help you improve the fundamental movement pattern of change of direction and can translate to any sport. So let's go ahead and dive into what you should know about this research article. The participants in this research study performed two different agility tests, both with 3D motion analysis. The first one is the 505 agility test. This is a test where they sprint forward and then through a timing light, change direction and sprint back through the timing light. The participants also performed the 5105 agility drill. During these drills, it wasn't just completion time that was tracked. Having the 3D motion analysis allowed them to also track peak knee flexion angle, peak hip flexion angle, and propulsive force ratios for the last and second to last step. So now let's dive into the three practical cues that had the greatest effect on improving change of direction speed. The first cue is slam on the brakes and drop the hips. This cue is specifically shown to reduce horizontal momentum by increasing horizontal braking force. This means by using the cue, drop the hips and slam on the brakes, the athletes pushed harder into the ground and were able to change direction more quickly. This also increased triple flexion during the second to last step as they were approaching the change of direction line. This meant that they were able to absorb more force and change direction more quickly. As you can see, this video is a really good example of slamming on the brakes and dropping the hips. This athlete's doing a really good job of pushing into the ground forcefully and slamming on the brakes, lowering their center of mass. You can also see it in this second clip. You can see that the coach is emphasizing here, stopping on a dime and really putting a lot of force through that front foot. By using these cues with your athletes, if you're training a wide receiver, they're gonna be able to get away from the corner and make a play this way. This may help a soccer forward lose a defender or may help a defender better change direction to stay with a forward. What I'm getting at is that having an eye for the athlete not lowering their center mass, not slamming on the brakes hard enough, and being able to cue them like this is going to make a difference in their change of direction speed and that will translate to better performance on the field. If you're curious about the exact kinematic details that led to this improving change of direction speed, you can look at this chart here. You can see that there was a significant improvement to ground contact time, to improving exit velocity, in propulsive force, and a lot of other variables. A lot of these specific variables of force and impulse were improved significantly from the intervention group that had these cues and were not improved in the control group who were not cued this way. Moving on to our second practical cue, we have cushion or push the ground away. So what you can see in this clip is that this athlete is pushing the ground away actively to change direction here. This is going to be a good external cue that's going to improve change of direction speed more than an internal cue like activate the glutes or use the hips. A lot of times you'll hear coaches use the cues like activate the glutes or drive from the hip. And while that sounds like a good cue, that internal cue and internal focus doesn't provide as much force output and as much change of direction speed improvement as external cues like pushing the ground away. Specifically, this research article said to permit better motor skill retention, externally directed verbal coaching cues were used. This was demonstrated to enhance horizontal propulsive force, encourage active limb at touchdown, improve impulse at push-off, shorten ground contact time, and also more rapidly transition from braking to propulsion. So providing the cue, for example, to cushion landing, you're going to be more active in your limb, which is going to allow more rapid force absorption. That's going to help you transition from braking to propulsive force as you cue the athlete to push the ground away. 
Aside from specifically practicing change of direction with these cues, you can also add drills, especially horizontal drills, to create similar environments and improve these characteristics. What you can see from overtime athletics here is a lateral bounding drill, which is specifically helping these athletes push off the side of their foot and also absorb force quickly on that landing. You can see they're not just landing and absorbing force, they're actually landing and then immediately pushing back. Doing this type of drill with similar external cues, such as push the ground away and cushion landing, can help these athletes create more horizontal propulsive force, more rapid braking, shorter ground contact time, and all of these things that are associated with improving change of direction speed. So if you're looking to improve your change of direction, don't just do the change of direction drills, also incorporate specific plyometrics and other drills that can help you practice these cues and movement patterns. If you're enjoying this video, make sure you hit the like button. Also subscribe and turn notifications on. That really helps my small channel grow if more people turn on the notifications. And it'll also help so that way you don't miss any future videos. Moving on to cue number three, we have face towards the direction of travel. What you can see in this clip is that this encourages athletes to use full body rotation, reduce redirection demand, and better align their forces. These athletes hitting that change of direction and immediately turning to face the direction that they're going towards will better align their forces and overall improve their change of direction speed. You can see another pretty good example of this here with Micah Parsons from Penn State doing the three cone drill. And you can see he's actually turning his eyes towards that next cone and moving very efficiently around the cones this way. The three cone drill where you're doing a combination of rounding and change of direction would be a really good example of where you can use the cue face towards the direction of travel. If an athlete can be really efficient at rounding a cone and immediately looking towards the next cone and aligning their forces better, they're going to complete this drill faster and improve their change of direction speed. I want to mention if you happen to be studying for the CSCS, the Certified Strength Conditioning Specialist exam, it's really important to learn the details of this current research because it can be covered on the exam even though it's not in the textbook. The CSCS is the gold standard in the field of strength and conditioning, and if you are studying for that exam, make sure you do a few things. One, join my strength and conditioning study group on Facebook, link in the description below. And then two, check out the study resources that I have to help you pass the CSCS exam in the description below. If there are any change of direction cues or change of direction drills or plyometric exercises that you like to use to improve change of direction, go ahead and drop those in the comments below and we'll have a bit of a discussion down there and help each other become better coaches. If you guys enjoyed this type of content, make sure you subscribe and also go follow along on Instagram, TikTok, or on the podcast, The Movement System Podcast. Thanks so much for watching guys and I will catch you in the next one.